Utopia from Travis Scott finally dropped over the weekend. And everybody's been, you know, loving it, hyping over it, excited about it. And I have to be honest, much like most art that's being dropped nowadays or most content that's being created, I think nothing really lives up to the hype. And I feel like Utopia kind of, for me, um, was a little bit underwhelming, a tad bit underwhelming. I feel like the delays, obviously in part due to what happened in Astro World, that tragedy where 10 people unfortunately passed away, added to it, maybe COVID also, whatever, um, kind of added to anticipation of it. But I feel like after all that wait, to finally get this album in your hands and to finally listen to it, it was a little bit underwhelming. That isn't to say it's not ex excellently produced. It legitimately sounds expensive. It legitimately sounds expansive. It sounds like a score of a movie. Um, it takes you on a complete journey. Um, it's very cohesive in that from track one to track, you know, the end track, whatever it may be, is it 19 tracks? From track one to track 19, um, it kind of feels like an actual album because nowadays I feel like a lot of artists, because of Spotify playlistings or because of just the culture or the way people consume music, where they're mostly listening to one tune, a single, as opposed to an album, people are now starting to make albums like that. They're starting to make albums where they just put a collection of singles together. So it doesn't actually feel cohesive. It's not like an actual story you're telling. Or... Maybe the most important thing, which I think is way more important than that, because I'll just fall right now from a DJ's point of view, it's actually not important that your album sounds cohesive and that it tells a story, as in there's like a beginning, a middle, and the end. No, it's actually more important that it's sequenced correctly. There's actually a, an, a kind of a, an idea behind the sequencing, whether it's like you start off really hard and you end really soft, or whether you go up or down, whatever. There's actually some idea about the sequencing. And I feel like sequencing on this album is great. Because a good example being K-pop. That song K-pop with um, Bad Bunny in the weekend, I feel like, you know, it dropped as a single, was really underwhelming too, considering the level of artists that are involved. Bad Bunny in the weekend being two of our most prominent pop stars out there and Travis Scott. But when you listen to it in sequence to the album, especially before a very mediocre Kid Cudi appearance, it actually flowed pretty well. K-pop actually sounded pretty good. But I feel like as overall as an album, this was really underwhelming. And one of the things why it was underwhelming, and I say this with all due respect to Travis Scott, he has nothing to say. He has nothing to say. I feel like these records were kind of wasted on him. And if anything, these records or this album made me appreciate Kanye more than I already did. Because like your lump it with Kanye, he at least says something. He at least has a point of view. He at least is changing up his sound every single album, bringing something fresh bringing something new obviously his approach to making the album is absolutely insane right getting everybody to dress in black and stay in a fucking locker room of a stadium in a stadium somewhere committing to not swearing whatever it may be right like he approaches it with an idea of what he's trying to say a story to tell a pov a fucking approach to fucking artistry and i feel like for whatever reason one of travis's strengths as an artist or as a person is that he's very kind of like bland. That's probably why he's very collaboration friendly. McDonald's, Nike, whatever, right? He's probably one of the only black hip hop people I can think of, artists, right, out there, who's able to collaborate with fucking anybody. Because with the exception of the Astro World tragedy, which was a fucking horrific incident, I still don't, I still don't get how he kind of got away with that, to be fair. Because in my opinion, he was somewhat culpable for that tragedy. He didn't, he obviously, he didn't cause their, he didn't, he didn't, like, by his hand cause their deaths, but the actions that led up to it, he could definitely be responsible for some of it, in terms of his inability to kind of get the crowd to calm down and shit, was not good. But, that aside, Travis Scott is very brand friendly. And I feel like, maybe because he's so brand friendly, that's probably why he also doesn't say nothing on his music. Because, to say something with your music means you're going to be controversial. You're going to be in the Kanye West side of things where it's always a bit of a gamble to kind of do a deal with you because you might go and say some crazy shit later because you have a point of view. Well, I feel like Travis Scott doesn't have any point of view. So it kind of point, pills through in his music. Like this, this fucking album, right? The first three tracks or the first five. No, fuck that. The first 10, right? are incredibly, incredibly produced. 
they go on a fucking journey like the instrumentation the switch ups the fucking the sound the textures are incredible but can you, any of you tell me especially with Travis Scott fans what did this guy say in any of these records what did he say what did he actually say I can't remember absolutely nothing loads of croning stray ups loads of like nothing else was said and again these are all amazing tracks fucking banging tracks produced impeccably by some of the best producers out there most of the tracks i think have more than two producers or three on there that fucking contribute to the overall fucking finished record but they don't say jack shit it's so vapid so empty and for me i have to be honest this represent this is representative of the current state of art nowadays is just empty no one has anything to say no one's interesting um no one actually lives an interesting life no one tries to do interesting things no one has an actual point of view um no one has taste so all you get is this and in my opinion this is probably weirdly as this make point to make this in my opinion is a reason why I don't believe this common trope that people put out there. And I've heard people say it. Um, I heard somebody say it on the fucking podcast I love to listen to called Das Techno Team. Check them out. They have a really good podcast where they talk about club culture and stuff and they're based in fucking um, Berlin and shit. And they were basically saying, oh, AI could never replicate what the scene's about or the DJs or the music because it doesn't have the vibes or the atmosphere. It's like, no, that's bullshit. Because in my opinion, Travis Scott, Taylor Swift, even to a certain extent, fucking Adele that to me is as close to AI music that then that that to me is a version of AI music because it doesn't say shit it doesn't do shit it just is there for what it's there for lives when it lives and it disappears when it disappears but you don't remember anything from it now I'm sure some of the fans of Taylor Swift and stuff will say different because there's some songs that you connect with but in terms of this kind of cookie cutter almost in through out one year out for the other ability that's what I feel like Travis Scott kind of does. It's all kind of AI induced. It kind of makes, it leaves me feeling a bit empty. And it's weird because the album, like I said, is expensive. It takes you on a journey. The tracks are sensationally produced. Very expensive, clearly. Loads of texture in some of the sounds. Like everything you want. But in terms of his ability to say things on the record, to have a point of view, whatever, nothing is said. Zero in my opinion it's a real disappointment personally very 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 underwhelming but hey what do i know one thing that wasn't underwhelming one thing that wasn't underwhelming has definitely been the approach to it and people will say oh no he's about the music about the artistry i beg to differ as brendan Schaub would say i beg to differ that he's about the artistry because if he's about the artistry then nothing i've seen off the back of this fucking utopia album Look at the amount of fucking merch that's being pumped out for it. That makes me think now that clearly albums now are being used as an opportunity to just pump out fucking product. That's it. Let me just sell you shit. So instead of actually producing good music, actually saying shit, you're actually using albums as a weird um, audio sense, like an audio sensory business card, if that makes any sense. Uh, an, an audio fucking billboard to get people in to kind of then buy the stuff that you actually want them to buy which is the fucking shoes he's put out look at this look at how fucking shameless this is a pair of travis scott allegedly utopia nike air force ones that just have the utopia fucking thing ripped into the fucking bottom of a pair of air force ones nike air, nike air force ones are the most generic um easily applied fucking no easily favorable shoe of all time there's probably not a person on, the, on earth that does not not like a pair of air force one especially in all white everyone's gonna like them so selling this as part of your fucking bundle for an album is for me a legitimate a legitimate a legitimate example of a cash grab and not caring about the music but there's more tons of merch that briefcase that you saw him carrying around everywhere of course merch Collaboration with Cause, of course, more merch. St. Michael collaboration, Utopia t-shirts, fucking posters, um, movie posters, vinyls, like all out on the same day. 
as the album drops, all this stuff is available to buy instantly. Instantly. So the music doesn't say shit, but if you want to fucking say something about the music you listen to, by wearing something and listen to it, you buy the fucking art. You buy the fucking clothing. You buy the fucking shoes. How fucking horrendous and heinous is this? The lack of shame is fucking frightening. And for me, this is a good example of why artistry nowadays is so dead. Because this is what's most important. Because probably, this is what's probably going to make the most money for the guy. Right? The ability to, because you imagine, merch sells on their own, more money in his pocket. But then also, the ability to sell more first week will probably increase your ability to book more shows, which would mean more money in your pocket. So it's dem demonstrably way more advantageous, it's, more, it's way more advantageous, sorry, for you to go and have all of this fucking merch behind your fucking album as a bundle or whatever it may be, so that you can obviously boost the first week sales and improve your ability to make more money. Which then in part means the art itself suffers, which then means the fans of your actual music are the ones that get shafted. It's absolutely horrendous. Empty, vapid shit. In my opinion, all of these designs could be generated via AI. And in my opinion, all the things that Travis Scott said, not the music, the things that he said, the words, you could put that for an AI bot and you could probably do something similar. So all people on their high horse about AI not being able to replicate the human touch and we're all fucking, you know, these highfalutin artists. Nah, mate. Most people are not. Most people don't know how to make great art most people don't have the capacity to make great art most people don't have enough time to meditate and sit with their thoughts or actually do the work or do the research needed to produce great work so all you get is mediocre shit and you know which then feeds into people listening to mediocre shit reproducing it and we just get into this weird fucking cycle it's fucking heinous